When day comes, we ask ourselves, where can we find light in this never-ending shade? The loss we carry, a sea we must wade. We've braved the belly of the beast. We've learned that quiet isn't always peace. And the norms and notions of what just is isn't always just is. And yet the dawn is ours before we knew it. Somehow we do it. Somehow we've weathered and witnessed a nation that isn't broken, but simply unfinished. We, the successors of a country and a time where a skinny black girl descended from slaves and raised by a single mother can dream of becoming president only to find herself reciting for one. And yes, we are far from polished, far from pristine, but that doesn't mean we are striving to form a union that is perfect. We are striving to forge our union with purpose, to compose a country committed to all cultures, colors, characters, and conditions of man. And so we lift our gaze not to what stands between us, but what stands before us. We close the divide because we know to put our future first. We must first put our differences aside. We lay down our arms so we can reach out our arms to one another. We seek harm to none and harmony for all. Let the globe, if nothing else, say this is true. That even as we grieved, we grew. That even as we hurt, we hoped. That even as we tired, we tried. That we'll forever be tied together, victorious. Not because we will never again know defeat, but because we will never again sow division. Scripture tells us to envision that everyone shall sit under their own vine and fig tree, and no one shall make them afraid. If we're to live up to our own time, then victory won't lie in the blade, but in all the bridges we've made. That is the promised glade, the hill we climb, if only we dare it. Because being American is more than a pride we inherit. It's the past we step into and how we repair it. We've seen a force that would shatter our nation rather than share it would destroy our country if it meant delaying democracy. And this effort very nearly succeeded. But while democracy can be periodically delayed, it can never be permanently defeated. In this truth, in this faith we trust, for while we have our eyes on the future, history has its eyes on us. This is the era of just redemption we fear.
Good morning, Parish Hill. Today is Tuesday, February 23rd, 2021. Still a Monday schedule. I'm Miles. And I'm Kyle. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please pause for a moment of silence. The person who has lived the most is not the one with the most years, but the one with the richest experiences, Jean-Jacques Rousseau. Uh, for birthdays today, at the beginning now, um, happy birthday to Kaylin Pearl and Gretchen Ritchie. Um, for today's Black History Month feature, we do Amanda Gorman, who was the first National Youth Poet Laureate from 2017 to 2018. You might most likely know her from her reading of her poem, The Hill We Climb, at the inauguration of Joe Biden. Gorman was born with auditory processing disorder and had a speech impediment as a child. She saw that as a strength, though, saying that these obstacles directed her focus to reading and writing, which she, she excelled at. Gorman graduated from Harvard in 2020 and continues to write poetry focusing on oppression, feminism, race, and marginalization. That's wonderful. Juniors interested in running for class of 2022 officers can pick up candidate forms in Mr. Yo's room 127. Forms need to be completed by Friday, February 26th, and return to Ms. Rio and Mr. Tracy. And remember, while most of the week is a Monday schedule, or the rest of the week is a Monday schedule, we will have a traditional Friday schedule with advisory on Friday. And next week, barring any further changes, we will be returning to the regular in-person block schedule with double periods and all that. Ooh, pretty scary. And next week starts with capstone presentations as well. Ooh. Uh, all right. Middle School Council will have a meeting this Tuesday after school in room 140. We will be discussing the end of year picnic and fundraising. Any middle school student is invited to participate. If you registered for the Connecticut Junior Science and Humanities Symposium, stop by room 140 or email Mrs. Leitner to confirm. And Model UN will be meeting on Thursday after school t uh, this week. The PTA is selling face masks in support of the Dakota Noel Bartlett Scholarship. All masks are two ply with interfacing and nose wire. Kids in large size are available. Lots of different prints. Some even come in flannel. Again, all proceeds go to the Dakota Noel Bartlett Scholarship Fund. You may visit the website to make your purchase. This is, uh, I don't know if it's on the screen or not, but uh, sure parachill.memberhub.store.store. And now Jason, and now we with some sports news. Hello, and my mic works finally today. So, we have a lot of sports news today. Um, first off, the today's middle school practical practice schedule will be: middle school girls will practice from 2:30 to 3:35, middle school boys will practice from 3:35 to 3:40, and the middle school boys will report to the first to the cafeteria at 2:30. So, on Saturday, the high school basketball teams split their games with Capital Prep. The boys lost 73 and 41 and got dunked on five times. While the girls defeated Trailblazers 73 to 48. Casey Dupuis and Christy Zader had outstanding games for the Pirates. Casey scored 33 points and pulled down 14 rebounds, and Christy scored 28 points and had 12 rebounds. Casey Dupuis is seven points shy of reaching a personal milestone of scoring 1,000 points in her career. The stream had a concurrent 52 viewers, which is lower than the last game, but it was a Saturday, so they had other things to do. On a side note, Casey Dupuis was also selected as the Max Preps WBCA Region 1 Basketball Player of the Week for February 14, 2021. Region 1 includes all of New England, which congratulations, Casey. Also, besides all of that, recently the girls' basketball team has created a change.org petition to get spectators allowed back into the game, especially parents so they can watch their kids play. More information on this will be below after this live stream. Well, excuse me, we'll be live after this is aired and go give the girls some support. Miles, what else do we have? Or Kyle, what else do we have? Uh, today we have lunch, which is a choice of cheese, pepperoni, buffalo, or veggie pizza with Caesar salad and, of course, fruit of the day. And weather? Today uh, actually will be fair yet eventful with a high of 41 and a low of 29. I say eventful because around 2 p.m. we should see a small bout of rain followed by some snow, clouds following for the rest of the day. However, for the rest of this week, we shouldn't see too much precipitation, not until Saturday with rain predicted to go all day. So I would say bye to the snow we currently have on the ground, but who knows. All right, Paris Show, I think that's it. Um, have a great day. We will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.